Hi, this is Brad Linder with Energist, which is a company working on a wireless charging technology. And unlike uh, inductive or resonance-based uh, wireless charging, this actually uses radio frequencies to charge things across uh, large distances. And eventually, you could have a base station or a power station or something that looks like this, a fairly large appliance that you could have in your home, or you could build it into other devices. So your 40-inch TV could have it built into the bezel. And in that situation, it could theoretically power things as much as 15 feet away. You walk into a room, it detects uh, your devices over Bluetooth and says, go ahead and charge my phone but uh, before we see those on the market we're more likely to see smaller devices so I'm here with okay from, from Energist which is a company developing the technology They're going to license it out to third-party companies and why don't you show me what some of these things are here sure what we're showing here this is our reference design kit and evaluation kit for uh, what we consider our, and call our miniature what up transmitter so this is ultimately what the size is going to be for those things. And the goal for this transmitter is to be a very low cost, small transmitter that different wearable devices, different small electronic companies can include in the box for very low cost so they can get rid of things like this. And the idea is that companies want to get rid of that little micro USB port because they want to make their devices fully waterproof. And what this allows them to, is to do just that. Something as small as this will be able to charge their device and uh, they can do it in a way that there's no plugs. So what we're showing here, I have an ASIC, a single ASIC and our antennas. This is the antenna side and some green LEDs. So as I get close to this, you'll see that it lights up because it's starting to get that energy, right? And as I get closer, it gets really bright and it's charging, it's not charging, but it's actually powering those LEDs. And therefore, you can take other devices, such as a wearable, you know, fitness tracker, and charge in that same manner. Okay, so this small transmitter, miniature what-up transmitter, is really a low-cost solution for wireless charging. And because our antennas and ASICs are so small, they can fit in devices such as uh, Bluetooth headsets, even as small as um, earbuds and hearing aids. Um, and so, we, so a unit that's this small should be able to charge a Bluetooth headset, a sure. fitness tracker, something yes. very low power. You wouldn't want to, you probably wouldn't have enough power coming out of this to charge a full uh, a smartphone, but something a little bit larger than this might be able to do that, right? Correct, exactly right. And so it just needs to be near it, so it doesn't have to be placed on top of it, it can be placed next to it, yes. uh, it can be placed within an inch or two probably. Yeah, that's what we anticipate. Um, we see a, the amount of power you know, mm -hmm. ranges, and as you get too far, you're really going to lose the, the, the conceivable power. So, so what's the difference here? I mean, if we had a larger unit or something uh, like this that can handle 15 feet, is it just you need more room for antenna or? Yeah, there's, so there's multiple antennas. There's hundreds of antennas in, that, in something that size. And, and the ASICs as well. Um, so they're almost like Lego building blocks in that the more you add to them, the more power and the further distance that we can put out. Okay. Now there is, a, there is at least one downside to using this sort of method as opposed to a wired connection, which is that you lose a little bit of electricity, right? Yeah, you lose a little bit of electricity. A lot of times people will say, well, hey, you know, is it safe for the environment? Is it, you know, my you? But the amount of electricity we're putting out is very small. Um, right now, if I was asked you, what amount of power do you think you, you use to charge your smartphone at your house? What do you think the dollar amount you spend on charging your phone at your house is for the year? Yeah, it's a couple of bucks a year, right? Yeah, it's yeah. tiny. It's yeah. about a dollar fifty of that, right? Uh, so it's still a very, very small amount of power. And what we're seeing is the huge convenience, right? So you're going, so from, about, you're going from about a dollar fifty to maybe two dollars over the course of 365 yeah, days. Yeah, it's going to yeah. be small, right? Uh, but it's a huge convenience factor. So imagine uh, having security cameras in your house that you don't have to put wires down the wall or inside the wall, or you don't have to replace batteries. Uh, that's what this solution allows you to do. Everyone's talking about the Internet of Things and how many connected devices you're going to have in your home. That's going to be a nightmare to change the batteries because you're going to be changing battery out almost every night or something if you have all these devices. This allows you to get rid of that you know, and not have to worry about that. It's all software control. So the software can identify different things that are you know, beginning to be charged and identify them so you know what, I need to charge this remote control June 14th at 2 a.m. in the morning. And it's going to identify that. It's going to keep checking on that device to see if you've been using it more and, and, and move that charging date up. But it's going to identify those things. Likewise, another great thing about this, we're tracking the devices with Bluetooth, and that's how we send that pocket of energy just to that device. So if I lose something, let's say I put uh, my fitness trackers in the bottom of my duffel bag that I take to the gym, and I forget it's there, and I can't see it, and I lose it. I can mark in my software that I've lost it. And then when that duffel bag comes in within range of my transmitter, my transmitter can alert me, hey, 
that, that fitness tracker is now within range. And I'll identify, wow, it's supposed to be my double bag, you'll find it. So some really unique things that charging is going to change over the next, next year or two. Okay. And, and uh, also speaking of Bluetooth, It'll know when your phone's in range or your tablet or your laptop or whatever because of Bluetooth connection, so you're not going to be just pumping energy out through right. the air. Yeah, the transmitter doesn't fed out any energy until a device comes within range. The transmitter tracks it, identifies, is it authorized on my network, just like a Wi-Fi router. Is it authorized on the network and yes or no, and does it need power? If it needs power, it's going to send a small pocket of energy just around that device. There's really no discernible power anywhere else in the room. Just concentrate at that device to charge in a more efficient manner. Some people might think, am I basically walking through an energy field? Is it like sticking my head in a microwave? How, how safe is this? Right, so one of the big things, of course, we have to go through FCC approval. That's, that's the key. Uh, and one of the unique things that we have is this tracking ability, so we're not pumping a whole room full of energy. And also the important thing is the, the, the frequency we use is 5.8 gigahertz. That's a very reflective signal. So that, you know, unlike Wi-Fi that can go through your house or your apartment, our signal goes about 15 foot, and that's about it. It doesn't go through your body, it doesn't go through walls very well. It's, it's a very, very reflective signal. So that's good for, for health reasons as well. It's gonna bounce off things. Um, and then also, we're not putting a lot of power out. Um, there's other things we can do as well uh, to really identify where people are at in the room. Uh, so we have some unique uh, technology coming out on that side. Uh, so this has been in development for a couple of years, obviously. Uh, this year we're going to start to see products? Yeah, we're going to start seeing this miniature transmitter on the market. We anticipate the very end of 2016, early 2017. Okay. And then what we consider to be the mid-size transmitter and full-size transmitter after that time period. Okay. And so uh, with, the, with the mini, uh, the transmitter will be out. It'll, it's, again, companies are going to need to license it. So. Uh, you're not going to be selling it yourself, Correct. but we'll see chargers and then uh, presumably gadgets that work with those chargers. Exactly. Yeah. A lot of a lot of consumer electronics that um, want to get rid of the port because they want to make that device waterproof and they want to have less of this in their life and more of something that's more elegant that's through the air. Just like you know, Ethernet was great. Everyone, we all got it on the internet with the internet. I don't know the last time I plugged in the Ethernet. We've all moved to Wi-Fi. This is really that next step that we see. It's moving away from plugging into the wall and moving towards more of a Wi-Fi-like type charging. Now, now, last I heard, this technology is, we were talking about efficiency earlier. It's about 70% efficient. Is that right, Still, It depends on how far you are from, from the transmitter. That really ranges substantially. Um, but uh, we, we see efficiency rates uh, being improved by our technology. That's one of the biggest things we have. Uh, is is uh, what we put together in terms of our ASICs and also our power and amplifier chips. Uh, so we're working to make the, the solution as efficient as possible, but still provide that flexibility and mobility that, that the one solution is. Do you foresee any changes in the efficiency level, I guess, uh, be between now and release, or is it yes. just... Yes, yeah, we're always making improvements. We, uh, we announced uh, the receiver ASIC uh, is uh, being qualified, and that's uh, very uh, close to qualification. And we have some other technology, our transmitter ASIC and power amplifier chips are ways that we can also improve that efficiency. Okay, so, so right now, wired is still the most efficient, but the most inconvenient. Uh, there are other wireless charging solutions, but you still generally have to place your device right on or near uh, those devices. This will be a little bit less efficient, but again, it's not a huge amount when you're talking about low-power devices like phones. Yeah, I mean, just like Ethernet is still way faster and has a much broader um, bandwidth than Wi-Fi, but that that flexibility that Wi-Fi gives you, that mobility that Wi-Fi gives you, it's hard to ever plug in again to Ethernet. That's the same thing that we anticipate with this. Okay, and you're... Um, You've got a, a tier one uh, uh, company that's going to be coming out with products relatively soon. You can't make an announcement yet, but what kind of products are we going to be able to expect to see from that company? Um, they, they do mobile electronics, consumer electronics. Um, I'll kind of leave it at that. Um, I think we might, have, we might have explained a little bit more on some of our recent calls, but um, just uh, I'll leave it at consumer electronics. Okay, so we're going to have some, some consumer electronics uh, like phones and other sorts of devices coming from a company that's yet to be named. Before that comes out, though, we might see, see some of these smaller things like fitness trackers and, and right. other devices. We anticipate um, end of this year, some fitness tracker type devices, uh, end of this year, really an extra time frame, uh, Bluetooth-enabled devices such as headsets and so on. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. This is Brad Linder with Lilliputing and look at Energis's WhatsApp wireless tracking.